11.3% of the population in America has diabetes. 1.4 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes every year. The medical cost per year is $237 billion. Diabetes, it's everywhere. This is the Embrace Podcast. Diabetes is everywhere. It affects all age groups, all ethnicities, all walks of life. And on this show, we talk about diabetes awareness, current events and news, tips, advice, motivation. We'll speak with guest speakers. Welcome to the family. This is the Embrace Podcast. Hello and welcome to part two of the Parenting Masterclass series. Today we're going to be going over some of the basics. We're going to be talking all about blood sugar monitoring, how to go about it correctly. Um, We're going to talk about some tips and advice regarding blood sugar monitoring. I'm going to give you some insider scoops and some things that I wish that I knew when I was diagnosed about blood sugar monitoring. We're going to go a little bit into the um, importance of changing your lancet and then we're going to end off with getting into insulin talking about insulin um, the different types how to administer it and again some more tips tricks advice insider stuff that I wish I knew um, if you didn't <clears throat> if you haven't listened to part one yet go check that out um, our introductory um, to the the guide in this series it's a good one it's all about taking a deep breath and knowing that everything's going to be okay and um, knowing that your child is going to be okay and, and your child will live a happy and full and thriving life. Um, we just got to take some extra steps and make sure that we're managing it correctly. And that's what this guide is all about. That's what this series is all about. But without further ado, let's get into the basics, understanding the basics. By the way, I hope you had a great week. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy that you're here with me. And I'm happy that we're learning together and we're on this journey together. But let's get into it. Understanding the basics. Type 1 diabetes is a chronic condition in which the body doesn't produce enough insulin. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood sugar levels. So without enough insulin, blood sugar levels can become dangerously high, which can lead to various complications. So what does that mean for me and my child? What does the new normal look like for us? And what can I expect? To put it plainly, you will now be taking over as the pancreas. It is your responsibility to take the pancreas's responsibilities. Primarily, that comes down to three essential things. Checking the blood sugar, using that information to determine whether you need to take some insulin or ingest some carbs, and doing your best to keep that blood sugar in a healthy range. It may see it may it may seem overwhelming at first, but with time and practice, you and your child will become experts at managing type 1 diabetes. Trust me, before you know it, you'll be looking at your child so proud of how well they are doing uh, with this curveball life has thrown at you. So take a deep breath, embrace the challenge, and get ready to help your child thrive with type 1 diabetes. We have these um, things at the end of the chapters called Frederick's Takeaway, and it's just a quick excerpt from, again, our friend uh, Frederick the Pancreas. But this one isn't directed towards the child, it's, it's more directed towards you. And just giving you a quick recap, um, it, that way if you ever want to look back and flip through the book and you want to reference some of the highlights, uh, this is what this is for. And it's just a good kind of closing and um, a summarizer of the chapter. When I read books, sometimes I forget what, what just happened and what I just learned unless I highlight it or take down notes. And this is kind of to help with that. So Frederick's takeaway. Congratulations on taking the first step to becoming a diabetes expert. Monitoring your blood, uh, monitoring your child's blood sugar and taking insulin or consuming carbs, depending on what the meter tells you, that is the meat of diabetes. Now let's take a closer look at these, then we'll get into the potatoes. You're doing great so far. Blood sugar monitoring. What is blood sugar monitoring? Again, yes, we're going to be going through some of the basics, okay? But stay with me. We're going to get into some good stuff. And I guarantee you keep listening. You're going to hear some stuff you didn't know before. So what is blood sugar monitoring? One of the most important aspects of managing your child's type 1 diabetes is monitoring their blood sugar levels using a glucose meter. This small device uses a drop of blood typically obtained by pricking the finger to measure the amount of glucose in the blood. This reading can be used to determine if your child's blood sugar levels are too high, too low, or within a healthy range. From there, you can decide if you need to make any necessary adjustments such as eating a snack if below range or administering insulin if above range to keep their blood sugar levels at that desired sweet spot. 
and in parentheses. Don't worry, we'll talk more about these actions in the chapter after this one. But for now, let's focusing on the monitoring. Wait, but for now, let's focus on the monitoring itself. Tracking your child's blood sugar levels is crucial in making sure they stay ha happy, healthy, and feeling themselves. As you all know, or maybe you don't, when your blood sugar is high or low, you just don't feel like yourself. So if you, for me, my blood sugar is high, I get angry, I get irritated, I get irritable. If I'm low, I lose energy. I'm I'm pretty much like a ghost. So that's the whole. That's I feel like that's the whole point and the goal of diabetes is making sure you or your child, uh, whoever's diagnosed just feels like themselves. You just want to be, in that sense, in that regard, like everyone else. You want to feel like yourself. You want to make decisions based off of what you feel, not because you're high or low or whatever. You just want to feel like yourself. And that's the, I feel like that is the, the, the point. That is the goal with diabetes and managing diabetes. But let's get back to it. So, target blood sugar ranges and in interpreting blood sugar readings. The target blood sugar ranges for children and adolescents with type 1 diabetes can vary depending on the individual and their specific circumstances. However, in general, the American Diabetes Association, the ADA, recommends the following target blood sugar ranges for children and adolescents. For, I know, a side note. I know that in certain uh, areas or cer certain regions of the world, uh, we we read glucose differently. Some people use that like the decimal system in their blood sugar. So I hope uh, maybe I need to add that in the guide, um, both versions. But right now I'm only going to be talking about the milligrams per deciliter. Um, if you're here with us in America, in the states, but if not, I'm, I'm later on in the guide. I'm going to add actually the uh, the point decimals in which you guys use. But anyways. So the target ranges before meals is going to be, you're going to be shooting for 90 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. Um, for one to two hours after the start of a meal, you're going to be shooting for less than 180 milligrams per deciliter. And at bedtime, you're going to be wanting to shoot for 90, anywhere between 90 and 150 milligrams per deciliter. So notice that it isn't just a just straight up answer. It's not just... 150 at all times or 100 to 150 at all times no of course after a meal you're going to be running a little bit higher but that's normal that's expected that's the average that's the goal that's the range um, before meals you're going to be a little bit on the lower side and uh, when you're going into bed you're going to be um, wanting to shoot for the 90 to 150 range so you don't go too low and you don't get too high and yeah and this is super important um, this goes with everything in this series and in in the guide um, and there's of course a disclaimer in the guide but this goes for everything that i am teaching in the series um, but it's but it goes i want to have to explain this but it's important to note that these are general guidelines it's crucial for individuals with type 1 diabetes to work closely with their healthcare team to establish their specific target ranges and treatment plan but for the most part this is what we will be aiming for so if you're at your endocrinologist office and they tell you that your ranges need to be different, then I guess they need to be different. Don't argue with them. Don't don't throw me under the bus. Don't say, well, listen, this guy tells me different. No, every child is different. Um, that's why you're going to need to be working closely with your team, and they will give you the perfect range for you. But again, these are general guidelines. This is the majority. Sugar checking time. There are several ways to monitor blood sugar levels in children with type 1 diabetes. The most common methods include Blood glucose meters. These handheld devices measure blood sugar levels from a small sample of blood obtained by pricking the finger. Blood sugar meters are portable and easy to use, but require regular testing throughout the day. Continuous glucose monitors, or CGMs. These devices use a small sensor inserted under the skin to measure blood sugar levels continuously throughout the day. CGMs can provide more detailed information about blood sugar trends and can alert you to potential problems, but may require more frequent calibration and can be more expensive than blood glucose meters. Urine ketone testing. This method measures the presence of ketones in the urine, which can indicate a lack of insulin and potential danger. However, urine ketone testing does not provide information about current blood sugar levels and is not a substitute for regular blood glucose monitoring. We'll take a closer look at this topic and when it's necessary to check for ketones a little later. Your child healthcare team will work with you to determine the best monitoring method for your child and to provide guidelines and guidance on how often to test blood sugar levels. But typically, newly diagnosed diabetics start off with a good old glucose monitor. 
Here are the steps to test your blood sugar. To test your blood sugar, you, you will need a blood glucose meter, some test strips, a lancing device, and a lancet. First, second, you're gonna wa wanna wash your hands with soap and warm water, then dry them. Have alcohol swabs accessible for on-the-go situations where you are not near water and soap. Next, you're gonna wanna insert a test strip into your blood glucose meter. Then you're gonna want to use a you then you're gonna want to use the lancet device to prick the side of your fingertip. Most lancet devices have different depth settings, so adjust the depth as you see fit. You may not be drawing enough blood at the first or second depth setting, so adjust as needed. But be cautious: the higher the setting, the higher the sting. If you are not drawing enough blood at the higher depth settings, the lancet may need to be changed. Five, gently squeeze your finger to get a drop of blood. Touch the tip, then you're going to want to touch the tip of the test strip to the drop of blood. The blood will be drawn into the test strip. Last, you're going, to want to, you're going to want to wait for the meter to display your blood glucose reading. Again, basic stuff. I'm sure we all know this already, but good to go over them. Here's a tip. Your test strip needs a decent amount of blood to complete the test. So make sure you have a good amount before inserting blood into the test strip so you don't waste the strip. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, if you don't have enough test strip into the, um, or you don't have enough blood into the test strip, the, uh, the test won't be completed. It will say not enough blood and after a few seconds, um, it'll, it'll say like test canceled or whatever. So make sure you're putting enough blood in there. Um, however, if you poke, no need to double poke. What works best for me is using your thumb and index finger from the opposite hand and applying pressure at the middle of the prick finger and slowly pushing upward while applying pressure. This will usually do the trick. Side note, man, growing up, I always used to double poke. If I'm not getting enough blood, enough blood is not coming out of the finger, I'll double poke, I'll poke somewhere else. Um, and cause myself an extra sting for no reason. But um, I was taught that again, if you if you um, grab your thumb and your index finger and push upwards from the middle, um, the, the pressure and the blood will come out flowing. Um, but be sure to follow the instructions that come with your meter and test strips carefully as the process may vary depending on the brand. But very slightly, I accidentally skipped that word, but the process may vary slightly depending on the brand. Every test strip is different, uh, but generally you'll get the idea. How often should you monitor your child's blood sugar levels? The frequency of blood sugar monitoring will depend on your child's individual needs. In general, it is recommended that blood sugar levels be monitored before meals, two, af two hours after meals, before and after exercise, before bedtime, in the middle of the night if necessary, and any time you feel high, low, or just not yourself. It's better to know for sure than to guess. You can never test too often, and that's something I'll always abide by. That is something that I will always try to spread awareness about uh, and share, but you can never test too often. It's better to just double check than to guess um, and, and know for sure, especially if you don't have a CGM yet. Again, side note, we're gonna be talking about CGMs a lot um, later, but um, generally you guys are gonna start with the, the glucose monitor and the insulin, the CGM and stuff will come a little bit later in your journey, but again, uh, you're gonna have to go through the basics first. Your healthcare professional may recommend more or less frequent testing depending on your child's individual needs. In the beginning, you will need to be more on top of frequent testing to get a basic understanding on your child's diabetes and how uh, greatly certain foods or activities affects it. It is best to jot these recordings down in a logbook or an app and present them to your endocrinologist so that you are both on the same page and it can adjust as needed. You'd want to be prepared at your next checkup with evidence of when, how, and why your, your child's blood sugar has been particularly particularly high or low, rather than simply saying he or she has been really high lately. This will do wonders in the beginning and will fast track getting a good handle on their diabetes. Guys, this is super, super, super important. Uh, when, you, when your child is first diagnosed with diabetes, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of back and forth. There's going to be, a, the, generally, they'll, they'll take your meter or they'll just take an A1C test, which we're going to go into a lot later. But an A1C test is they'll draw blood from your like vein and they'll get a, um, a measure of what your blood sugars have been, a range or an average of what your blood sugars have been over the past uh, three to six months. Um, and that again is just a general kind of number. You're going to be wanting to shoot for five or six, uh, but it could go higher in the beginning. But with just that information, there's not a whole lot your endocrinologist can do. They might um, 
uh, change your ratio or increase doses, maybe change insulins. But if you are testing frequently, you're logging that stuff down. There's a ton of good apps. Again, we're going to get into logbooks a little bit later, but there's a ton of apps for that. And if you are jotting everything down meticulously and um, give that to your endocrinologist at your next checkup, they can see, okay, this person has been <clears throat> this person has been running low. Uh, particularly in the morning so let's change his dose for the mornings um, or this person goes to bed really or this person wakes up in the middle of the night really low let's chase just change his doses let's change his um, insulin to carb ratio it's a lot better to give them more information to go off of rather than that general snapshot that is the a1c you know what I'm saying so that's some that's a piece of gold right there um, Lastly, we're going to end off uh, today's episode with changing your lancet. Just do it. I love the the name of this chapter. Change your lancet. Just do it, man. <clears throat> it, it, if again, if you are uh, new to the whole diabetes thing, it is common. It's a it's a common joke and a meme in the diabetes community that we never change our lancets. We never do it because it's something we forget about or we're just maybe too lazy, but there are so many reasons as to why you need to change your lancet. Um, and we're about to get into that right now. Regularly changing your lancet is an essential part of managing your blood sugar levels. The lancing device, or poker as I like to call it, is the small needle-like device that pricks your finger to obtain a blood sample for testing. The lancet is inside and it's interchangeable. It's something we all forget to do and over time it can feel like an unnecessary chore, but here's why changing your lancet is important and how often you should do it. <clears throat> So first, first reason, hygiene and safety. Changing your lancet regularly helps maintain good hygiene and reduces the risk of infection. Using the same lancet repeatedly can lead to the buildup of bacteria, making it more likely to cause discomfort or skin irritation. By using a fresh lancet each time, you ensure a clean and safe testing experience. Optimal performance. Over time, the tip of the lancet can become dull or bent, resulting in less effective blood sampling. A worn out lancet may cause more pain and difficulty in obtaining an adequate blood sample. By replacing the lancet regularly, you ensure its sharpness and proper functionality, leading to a smoother and more accurate blood glucose testing process. Recommended frequency. The frequency of lancet changes may vary depending on personal preference and the individual needs. However, it is generally recommended to change your lancet after each use. This ensures that you start each testing session with a fresh, sterile lancet. Some individuals may prefer to change it every few days or once a week, but it's important not to exceed prolonged usage. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I try to be as real and as candid throughout this guide and throughout the series as I possibly can. Um, before I really took my diabetes seriously, man, I would go months. I'm not kidding to say I would go years without changing my lens. Because in my head, if I'm poking myself and blood is coming out, the job is being done, right? Wrong. You need to have a sanit. You need to be sanitized. You need to be. Uh, it's 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 really bad. It, it could cause infection. Uh, it's not hygienic, it, and it, it could give you less accurate readings. It's going to hurt more. It's going to leave more calluses on your finger. There's just so many reasons as to why you should change your lancet. Um, so just do it, please, for me. <laughs> and here are some quick tips to end off the uh, the chapter. Here are some quick tips for blood sugar monitoring. Wash your hands thoroughly before testing. If you are out and about and not able to wash your hands thoroughly, uh, prick your finger, wipe with an alcohol swab, then wipe again with a dry, clean paper towel or napkin for most accurate results. Side note, most people living with diabetes either have a purse or a bag that they carry with them. I have a diabetes bag and I always carry um, the little napkins that they give away for free at fast food restaurants. I just keep them with me. Um, I have always have alcohol swabs on me. Um, of course with my meter, my testing supplies, glucose tabs, all those good things. Um, but try to carry napkins and alcohol swabs in your purse or your diabetes bag or in a backpack or something. Use a clean lancet and test strip each time. Ensure the meter and the test strips are compatible and not expired. Record the results in a logbook or app. Take note of any factors that may affect blood sugar levels such as physical activity or illness. Identify patterns in blood sugar levels to make adjustments to insulin dosages. Share the logbook with your healthcare team during appointments for better management. 
Personalize your meter and Lance's device with colorful stickers or decals. Choose your favorite characters, patterns, or designs that bring a smile to your face. Decorating your diabetes tools can make the process more enjoyable and give them a unique touch. Plus, it's a great conversation starter with friends or classmates who may be curious about your stickers. Frederick's Takeaway. Monitoring blood sugar is crucial for managing type 1 diabetes and keeping it in range is the goal. Armed with the knowledge and skills gained from this chapter, you're well equipped to monitor your glucose levels and make informed decisions about your diabetes, chi your child's diabetes management. Remember, testing is not just a task. It's an important opportunity to take control of your child's health and live their best life with diabetes. And don't forget to have fun with it. Decorating your logbook or using a fun app can make the process a little more enjoyable. So that is it for um, this week's episode of the Parenting Masterclass. Don't leave yet. We're going to uh, read a little bit of the the uh, we're gonna read the intro paragraph for the next segment um, all about insulin it's called insulin power up mastering the sugar slang superpower um, but before you go before we get into that before I leave you off with that again thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for going on this journey with me and learning more about your child's diabetes or maybe your own if you have diabetes like me um, and we're doing we're doing we're doing good so far we're making good progress we're making good headway um, it's, it's an everyday battle diabetes. So just by taking small steps, by listening to this series, you are one step closer to, be, to becoming better at managing yours or your child's diabetes. With this knowledge, you can um, use it every day. And one, something that's super important is make sure you're, you are putting these advice and these tips into practice. I learned this from a, a book a long time ago. You can read all you want, but if you don't put those things into practice, you don't actually uh, use and do these things in the real world, they won't stick with you and you won't actually learn them. You'll forget them in a couple of days or a week or whatever. So make sure everything that you learned today, put it into practice. Try them today or tomorrow or whatever. Um, that way they stick with you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for tuning in this week. Uh, again, next week is all about insulin. So let's get into it. Insulin power up, mastering the sugar slang superpower. What is insulin and why is it important? Managing type 1 diabetes involves two important things, checking your blood sugar levels and using insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas, an organ located behind the stomach. It plays a crucial role in regulating the body's blood sugar levels and is essential for the proper functioning of the body's cells. Without insulin, sugar would build up in your blood and that's not good for your health. Insulin is like a helper hormone that keeps your blood sugar in check. It's like a key that unlocks the cells to let sugar inside, giving them energy to work properly. Now, this is it now. This used to be the pancreas's job, but unfortunately it quit without leaving a two week notice. Now that responsibility lies on you. I will see you guys here next week to learn all about insulin. We're gonna learn everything there has to learn about insulin, the different types, how to administer it, um, the difference between long lasting and short acting and basal and bolus. There is so much to talk about regarding insulin, so I'm really excited to talk about that next week. Um, again, I hope that this series and this guide is, is, is um, being a helpful resource to you. My whole um, goal and vision for this guide and this series is to equip you guys with the knowledge that you need to better take care of your diabetes or better take care of your child's diabetes. Um, like I said last week, when I, at least when I was diagnosed, I felt like I was chewed up and spit right back out within a week having to fend for myself and learn all of these new things and my parents I know felt the same exact way. So I hope this is helping, I hope this helps. Um, this, The full complete version of this guide is coming out November 14th on Diabetes Awareness Month Day. Wait, sorry. It's coming out November 14th on National Diabetes Awareness Day during the, the month of November which is Diabetes Awareness Month. So I, I really hope that you guys pick this one up and support the Embrace Foundation and support me. Uh, again, all proceeds from this guide are going back into the Embrace Foundation. And if you don't know who we are already, I'm sure you do, because I'm sure that's how you found out about this guide in the series. But if you don't, we are a nonprofit organization that helps diabetics all across the country get the supplies that they need for absolutely free. So with the purchase of this guide, we are able to send out more um, packages per week. So I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you tuning in and I appreciate you. I appreciate your hunger for the knowledge 
and the want to master this thing that we called diabetes and this battle, this journey. I'm excited. Okay, I'll see you guys here next week for insulin. Have a great week. Um, yeah, man, I love you. All right, you're doing great. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. If no, if, if you haven't heard that yet, I'm proud of you. You're doing great. Thanks for listening to another great episode of the Embrace Podcast. You can follow Embrace on Instagram at Embrace3Movement or on TikTok at Embrace3. If you or someone you know has diabetes and needs supplies, you can visit their website at TheEmbraceFoundation.org and fill out a supplies request form. We'll see you back here every other Wednesday for a fresh new episode of the show. Until then, embrace, endure, and overcome diabetes. You are not alone.